Let it not be said that the Schlag Daddy will never be happy. Let it not be said that the Schlag Daddy will never be optimistic. Let it not be said that the Schlag Daddy can't be positive about professional wrestling. Because contrary to popular opinion and belief, and perhaps 90% or so of the content on this channel pertaining to professional wrestling, deep, 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 deep down, I am still an optimist. I am still hopeful when it comes to professional wrestling. Because if I wasn't in any way, shape, or form, there is no way. And the Big Daddy means no freaking way! No way! That I would continue to watch this garbage that is professional wrestling today in any way, shape, or form. No way. Too many other things going on in life, too many other interests, too many other things I can occupy my time with. But after all those years of emotional connection and how much wrestling is a part of my identity and who I am and some of the cool things over the years that professional wrestling has personally brought to me, there will always be that optimistic part of me. It may not always show. It may not always be self-evident, apparent, however you want to put it, but it is there. So every once in a while, I need to do a better job of emphasizing good things about professional wrestling. And this video is an attempt at that. It doesn't mean that I'm not going to fly around about those things that need to be burned to the mother frickin' ground. But, 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 when something is good, I need to talk about that too. Life is about balance, you know. You need some type of balance. You need to counteract the negative with some of the positive. And to me, the news talking about Chris Jericho doing some business with Impact Wrestling and his raging in the sea, whatever the hell it's called, a uh, shit full of semen hunting sperm whales cruise in October. Oh, that's not the name. Oh, like you know what the hell the name is anyways. And how many of you are actually going to buy a ticket to go on the damn thing? Frankly, honestly, that big sausage fest it's going to be in October, if I told you it was a ship full of semen hunting sperm whale, well, some of you might be more inclined to actually buy a ticket to go. What the hell's the difference? But anyways, Chris Jericho unveiled this week that he is working with Impact Wrestling in this sense that the Impact Wrestling talent is going to be on that cruise in October. And to me, cool. It's a win-win for everybody involved. Chris Jericho adds additional talent to his crews. Impact Wrestling gets some attention, which they need. They get some exposure, up close and personal attention from fans on the crews. Who knows how up close and personal it could really be. Again, a good thing. I think this is a good thing. I think this is cool. In the grand scheme of things, it probably honestly doesn't matter to Hella Beans. It very well might not. But to me, it is a representation. And what I particularly am appreciating, even though Jericho got very corporate shilly late in his career, whereas for years he was somebody I really respected because you felt like he was giving you the real dope. Something flipped on him about the time he turned 40, got the dad bod, and wanted to be more and more like freaking John Bon Jovi. Um, one thing I appreciate about him now is to me, he has more of a feeling of a true independent contractor, not the independent contractor, the WWE signs to contracts where they say, you are not technically an employee of ours, but you can't do shit without our permission. And we're never going to give you permission like a real independent contractor. Like if Chris Jericho wants to appear in new Japan, like he's doing at that dominion show against Naito. He could do that. If he wants to do some business with Impact Wrestling, he could do that. If he wants to make an appearance at some point at ROH, he could do that. If he wants to come back for a short program in WWE again, he could do that. I think that's really cool. 
and something that the wrestling business today could really benefit from. Like you look at Jericho, he's a legend and a lot of people love him and respect his work. And to be fair, I've been a huge fan of the guy for years and have respected the hell out of his work. And even though he's one of those smaller guys, he did become a star. He wasn't a mega star, but he was a star. He was a reliable, steady hand that could draw you some damn money, move some damn merch, and get some eyeballs and attention on your product. You, know, you need some of that in today's wrestling. But I think it's really cool, whereas... You know, part of the way he would try and stay somewhat fresh, even though he would come back and always lose. So how fresh is that really? All you've done is decrease the amount of times that that happens. I think it's cool for him to go here and go there and go here and go there. Because then to me, it really keeps that character fresh. Because you never know where it's going to pop up and you never know what he's going to be doing. You never know who he's going to be involved with, who he's going to be working a program with, who he's going to be wrestling at a big show. And I also feel like for each of those companies, it freshens up their product a little bit in an old territorial mindset type of way where you bring in this guy for a two or three month shot. Then he goes here for a two or three month shot and then here and then here. And he never really truly wears out his welcome. And this is something I wish we would see more in professional wrestling now. I understand the egos involved, I understand the competitive nature involved, and I understand the WWE sits there in their crystal palaces in Stamford, Connecticut at Titan Towers, and they're like, we don't want to be associated with this. Impact Wrestling's not in our league. From an international standpoint, New Japan is not in our league. Uh, ROH is not in our league. We are different. We're not that. Da, 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 da. And, and maybe all that is true, and frankly, it kind of is. But at the same point in time, there is also something to be said about the greater good. And what I've never understood is a company that over two decades ago was secretly financing and helping to bankroll Paul Heyman for not paying his talent at ECW. All the while, ECW was able to go out there on TV all the time and shit on WWE, but specifically shit on WCW, but also WWE. All the while, in the ultimate hypocrisy that was Heyman, he was getting financed in part by him, payrolled by WWE and Vince McMahon, getting the opportunity to promote their pay-per-view on Monday Night Raw, all this other stuff. And it was a good thing for the business at the time. And historically, through that lens, it ultimately ended up being a good decision. Even if you say, well, where's the direct immediate benefit to your product? Where is this? Where is that? And the truth is, it might not be. But if you look at it then, by helping ECW get more exposure, by helping ECW get more eyeballs, eventually what that did is it helped to create a third semi-major North American wrestling promotion that meant that more talent could potentially get national television exposure, big match experience, so that way someday WWE could pick that talent off, not just from WCW, but from ECW as well. There were long-term benefits there. Let Paul Heyman craft and cultivate and develop them, and then we'll bring them in and give them a role and give them a shot, and we don't have to do much with them. We just roll them out there. So there was benefit, and I look at this now. I think about the benefit for the business if all of a sudden one day a Kenny Omega showed up on SmackDown and challenged AJ Styles for the WWE title. You could sit there and be like, well, that would never happen because how are they going to book it? Who's going to win? Da, 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 da. You could find creative ways to do things and still make shit incredibly interesting. There is no question, though, when you look at that from a payoff standpoint. Let's say Kenny Omega comes out at SummerSlam. I know totally not going to happen, but that's part of the problem. That's the point I'm getting at. Is stuff like this should happen. Kenny Omega should be appearing at SummerSlam and challenging AJ Styles. AJ Styles should be appearing at a New Japan show. Fucking, you could make a one-off here on a WWE pay-per-view and build your show around that match. You could then go to New Japan and do the same damn thing. Well, if the guy gets injured working with this guy from the other promotion, that shit could happen anytime, any place. No guts, no glory. Nothing ventured, nothing gained. Imagine how much interest would be elevated if you sat there and had that happen. Or if you sat there and had this guy go to Impact and have a short run. 
it's a good thing for the business overall, and it would eventually be for WWE if Impact got a little bit more of its footing and traction back in the North American la wrestling landscape. Appearing on ROH, why couldn't you have one of your guys go there? Why couldn't you have one of them come there? What it would do is it would provide some much needed spontaneity for the business at a time that it is severely and sorely lacking in it. What it would also do is give you an opportunity to do some fresh stuff. One thing that wrestling can be, especially WWE now, because of the way the show is constructed, because of the way things are written, it can get incredibly stale consistently. Same people wrestling, same matches in the same ways. If your writing's going to suck your booking's going to suck, then find ways to compensate for that. And one way to compensate for that would to sit there and have there be some type of special attraction thing happening. Like when Chris Jericho is challenging Kenny Omega, Chris Jericho is challenging Naito. You know, you sit there and you think about it. Imagine if you would have had War Machine, if I'm thinking about it right, War Machine, and the Usos or the New Day face off, let's say on a WWE pay-per-view, even if you had the WWE tag team win, if New Japan had an objection to that, then they're fucking stupid, because yes, one of your teams is getting beaten, but they're getting beaten on a much, much larger platform, and ultimately, when we really honestly look at it, how much do the wins and losses really matter anymore? They do, but they don't, and yes, where you're talking about, well, now you're getting beat in front of even more people, if the people like what they see, and you give them that type of exposure, it means they're going to be interested in what they do on the flip side. And again, you can find all types of creative ways to do things. And if you do something right, it doesn't matter who wins or loses because all parties involved can benefit. Whereas you could sit there and have somebody clearly dominantly win and both people look better for it. You could have it be really, really close and nobody's better off for it. I just think about all the chances and potential and opportunity that would come with doing these types of things is getting, imagine this, imagine Roman Reigns showing up in freaking Japan and challenging Omega or challenging Cody Fuckboy. Imagine the Usos going there and challenging somebody like the Bucks of Suck or them coming there. It would give us something to talk about. It would give those guys an additional stream of potential revenue when you're talking about not only the payout from coming and working with WWE in some way and the increased audience that that would bring, but also an avenue to sell their merch, which they do very well with. Now you have even greater potential exposure to audience. You have greater distribution. Like to me, it's a win-win all the way around. The old stubborn ways of thinking of, oh, we can't do this. We can't even do sky job. Fuck that shit. That's what old people say about professional wrestling when they're about 30 years too goddamn far gone and out of fucking touch. Now, don't get me wrong. Some of the ways of the past are still the right ways to do things. And the trick is to not overbalance or counterbalance too much one way or the other. But the one thing that this business really needs to me, at least for me personally, and that's what I can speak to at this point above all else, is some spontaneity. Having Impact Wrestling show up on Jericho's cruise, if that led to a match with him and fuckboy Sammy Callahan at some point at a future Impact pay-per-view, cool! It would be a nice bo temporary boost to them. It would give them an opportunity. It would be a chance for Chris Jericho to work with somebody he hasn't really worked with before. So again, something new, something fresh, something you didn't necessarily plan on seeing, but you saw it. I really, really hope the wrestling business at some point in time can get out of this kind of protectionist man mindset. This is primarily targeted specifically at WWE because they don't like to really have working relationships and stuff, such, and I think it's stupid. You are the clearly established kings. To me, there is no negative for you helping make wrestling even better. Outside of you having to pay your talent a little bit more because things get a little more competitive. But if you get more overall eyeballs on your product, that is a good thing. If you get more overall eyeballs on the wrestling product and the business as a whole, that's a good thing. At some point in time, I hope this company and I hope wrestling as a whole can figure out a way to coexist a little better and help one another out because I'm not just trying to sing kumbaya here, but it would really benefit the wrestling business and give us a much needed shot in the arm. It would.
but it'll probably never happen. Again, I'm the Schlag Daddy. This is the OTR Essential. Not the wrestling show you want, but because of stuff like this, just the wrestling show you need.